Greetings, everyone. Our study today, this week, will be the title of Dirty Garments. Dirty Garments. One will be in the book of Acts, chapter 7, and we'll be in Colossians, chapter 2. So while you're getting your Bibles and preparing yourself, let's ask God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost to come into our meeting today and bless each and every individual heart. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of your Son, Jesus, through and by the power of the Holy Ghost, giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory in all things, Lord. Pray that you anoint this message, Lord, through and by the Holy Spirit, that it will reach the hearts of those that it's intended, that it will not go out void, it will accomplish what it's been sent for. Pray, Lord, that every word that comes out of my mouth will come from you, the Godhead, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. May our ears hear and our hearts put it to use in your precious and holy name. I want to talk a little bit about the Apostle Paul and, and the title of this message is when they stoned Stephen in chapter 7 of Acts, <clears throat> we see that they laid their clothes at the feet of Saul. Saul had not yet been converted. So I want to get into this and use this in our everyday life. Let's say that someone comes to us and begins to talk about our pastor. It's dirty laundry. Somebody begins to come to us and talk about our brothers and sisters. Dirty laundry. When we handle those kinds of things, we're letting Satan take a hold in our lives that we may not be aware of. Gossip is a sin. I know of no one in my mind I'm speaking of at the moment, but I do know that it happens, and I do know that we need to get it under control. When we talk behind somebody's back and bite bite and talk about them, we think that makes us look good. But in fact, it's very weak in the eyes of God. He does not like his children fighting. Any parent that has children knows that when the discussion starts, the argument starts, and it gets out of hand that you say, wait a minute, enough is enough. Huh? And what happens when this begins to take place is we begin to lose our hold with Jesus Christ. Uh, now let me explain that a little bit. Uh, our faith begins to waver a little bit. Huh? Somebody gets sick and we say, well, will God really heal them? Huh? Uh, we want to be strong in God. We want to be strong in our faith. Huh? And thank God for his grace in the last session we talked about uh, the grace of Jesus Christ and how he has seen us to this point. Huh? But let's all agree with one thing. Let's come together. Huh? The world is in sad shape right now, but God is sitting on his throne. Huh? Nothing is hidden from him. Nothing is behind him. Huh? Nothing is over top him. Everything is underneath him. He knows what's going on. Huh? Uh, he knows uh, exactly the hairs on your head. He knows uh, uh, the number of your days, the footsteps. Uh, uh, so be not discouraged yet when we think uh, and then see that the world is in such a turmoil. Uh, uh, there is a Savior. There is a Redeemer. Uh, uh, there is one that stepped out of glory and said, I will go down there uh, uh, because of all this backbiting, all this fighting, uh, all these murders and all these things. Uh, I love my children uh, and I'll step out of glory and go down there today. Uh, and he did in that day. Uh, he stepped out of glory uh, uh, being 100% man and 100% God. Uh, uh, we're not serving somebody uh, uh, that's weak. Somebody uh, uh, that can't move when we need them to move uh, according to his will. Uh, uh, we're not serving uh, uh, some yellowback person uh, that doesn't stand up for his children. We're serving the creator of the heavens and the universe. Fourth chapter of Colossians, Paul began to understand, no doubt at some point in his life, uh, after his conversion, the greatest thing that I could have in my life is love. Uh, I love to tell my pastor I love him. Uh, I love to tell my brothers and sisters. Uh, and not only do I tell them, but I mean it. Uh, it comes from inside of here. Uh, it doesn't come from here or out of here. It comes from my heart uh, because I love God's creation. Uh, I love everything that he has made. Uh, uh, there's nothing uh, that he hasn't touched that he's breathed the breath of life into uh, and he loves us let's keep that in mind let's continue on 
I see so many people today. I hear so many people. Believe me, I've said it before. I'm going to ride this mule until it dies. Uh, theology will get you away from Jesus Christ. Uh, we cannot follow man. If we follow man, we will all fall in the ditch. Uh, now let me be clear about that. Uh, do I read commentaries? Yes. Uh, again, but when something doesn't meet with the Bible, uh, uh, the living Word of God, uh, I dismiss it as being man's thought. Uh, commentaries are man's thoughts the Bible is the all inspired word of God so many people want to talk about humanistic psychology it's in the church so deep right now Oh, it's so deep into the church right now. Uh, we need to wake up and understand uh, uh, that our own personal thoughts cannot save anyone. Uh, our own personal thoughts cannot stop uh, a drug addiction to somebody else. Uh, our own personal thoughts cannot stop alcohol in this world. Uh, our own personal thoughts uh, uh, cannot change a person's life. Uh, it takes Jesus Christ. Uh, it takes the Son of God uh, and the Godhead to change our lives uh, by that I mean we have to submit to Jesus Christ and not another. Uh, uh, we try to say, uh, oh, well, I'll follow this one uh, and I'll follow that one. Uh, I just can't wait Sunday morning uh, to stay at home uh, and not go to church uh, and sit home and read my Bible uh, and watch God. Uh, uh, that may be needful at some point in our time, uh, but he said not to forsake ourselves to assemble together. I'm sorry for yelling. When the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, He'll give you power. He'll transition this body into a work for Jesus Christ. I'm not opposed to people staying home when they're sick. Uh, but just to want to sleep in because they don't want to put on their makeup. Uh, uh, they don't want to uh, uh, take a shower and get ready to go to church. Uh, but it'll let you invite them out on Sunday evening. Uh, and watch how fast they get ready to go out and eat. Uh, and talk. Uh, and have the worldly things in their mind. Uh, a little wine. A little of this. A little of that. Uh, uh, they're not hesitant at one off. Uh, uh, one bit to get ready. Uh, I think what I need but ask them to go to church on Sunday morning. I'm tired. I'm weak. I've had a rough week. Life's been tough on me. Get your faith in Jesus Christ. Come out. Assemble yourselves together. I love to be in church with my brothers and my sisters. And I don't want to hear any dirty laundry when I get there. Paul said, don't bring me any dirty laundry. Uh, I declare to know nothing among you. Uh, I don't need to know the battles you're fighting uh, unless you ask me to help you pray. Uh, I cannot make intercession for you. Uh, uh, that is the God, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, that does that. Uh, but I can pray for you. Uh, but when I go to church, I don't want to hear any dirty laundry. Uh, uh, Paul said again, I don't want to hear anything among you. Uh, I don't want to be brought down to your level. Uh, I'm talking about this word. Girl, huh, uh, lift me up. Huh, uh, he said, pray for me. Huh, everywhere Paul went, huh, uh, pray for us. We love you. Huh, he says, I came to you. Huh, uh, not with enticing words, huh, uh, but with the word of Jesus Christ in my heart. He said, hallelujah. He said, I didn't come begging for money. He said, I didn't come asking for a place to stay. He said, I came knowing that Jesus would provide. He is a provider. He said, the money that I collected, I spent it wisely for the use of Jesus Christ. Today, we don't want to invest in missionary work because we don't know those people over there. Well, we know what the Bible requires us to do. Live by that. Humanistic sight. Traditions are nothing more than, than works of darkness. That's, that's tough. Now that's tough, that's tough preaching, tough talking. Human traditions is, is spiritual work, is darkness. It's not spiritual works of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you how to get through this. Just, just pray a little harder. Read your Bible more. Do this, do that, and, and God will bless you. That is just a daily, normal sacrifice for me to read my Bible. It is a sacrifice for me, not for Jesus Christ. He doesn't need my sacrifice if I'm not bringing it to him in prayer and faith. 
So many people want to guide you right down the road that they want you to go. Don't follow them. We were once dead. How were we dead? We were dead in trespasses and sins. But Jesus Christ saw fit to save my soul, to set my feet up on the solid rock, and there I want to stand. This thing that going around that the cross was the greatest defeat in history, let me tell you something, my friend. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Huh? Uh, Jesus brought out uh, a darkness right out. He brought it out into the open. Huh? He made an open showing of it. Huh? He went down to the lower parts and told Satan, Give me the keys to my people. Huh? Give me the keys to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. Huh? Everyone that ever lived huh? before his crucifixion. Huh? He took from the lower parts of the earth. Huh? And he moved them into paradise above which is in heaven. Huh? So don't tell me that it was the worst defeat in history. Huh? You're not spiritually sound when you listen to that. You're not spiritually sound when you listen to that nonsense. Get away from me. Stay away from me. We have people today that want to agree with rules and regulations. Well, I got to do this because the law says this. Yes, the law says don't speed in your car. But God's law is more effective. God's law is what is important. And what is God's law? I'm sorry to yell. What is God's law? It's to love the Lord with all your soul, mind, heart, strength. And the second is to love your neighbor. Boy, that sounds so easy. Mm. Wow, that's, that's easy. Well, try it sometime. Try it sometime. Don't, don't swallow. He said you, they'd swallow a, a camel and gag on a gnat. Leave these worldly conversations to the world. Let them deal with it. Let them see the light in our lives. Let them come and ask us, through and by the power of the Holy Ghost, what is it that we have that they want? They want salvation. They just don't want to admit it. But I'm here to tell you today, it's not a pleasant statement. Whether you believe it or not, it does not matter to me. There is no doubt in my mind that hell is real. I had some relative of mine a few years back really got my attention. She had been serving God. She's gone on to be with him from 1964 up until, I don't know, 2018 or whatever. Speaking of hell, she said, Vince, you know that we have relatives that are in hell right now. We need to reach out to the lost and dying world, reach out to it with a hand of gentleness, with a hand of meekness, with the hand of Christ and say, I can help you. Uh, when somebody's down, don't just beat them to death. Uh, with human traditions, uh, I reach out that hand in love and say, uh, uh, let me help you. Uh, uh, Jesus could have said to Peter, go ahead and sink. Uh, uh, you thought you could do it. Well, you couldn't, so go ahead and sink. Uh, he said, no, uh, uh, give me your hand uh, and I'll lift you up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, all men will be lifted up. Acts 7 and 58, this shows how close Saul had become to see this, this whole thing through, this whole mess through. He thought that in his mind, Satan thought in his mind by using Paul, that he could do one thing, he could stone one person huh, and wipe out Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, huh, uh, there's no one person that will ever be wiped off the place of the earth uh, uh, that does not serve Jesus Christ. Uh, he has a remnant, my friend. Uh, he has somebody, whether I serve him or not, is immaterial uh, unto him. He has a remnant. Uh, uh, so Paul, uh, at that time named Saul, thought, I'll just wipe this person off. Uh, and there goes Christianity one by one. Uh, uh, just like dominoes, I'm going to get them. <coughs> Sorry about that. He had become so close to the dirty laundry that they threw it right on his feet. Oh, but Paul, Paul didn't see what was coming down that dusty road. Mm, he didn't see what was coming down that dusty road. <laughs> Thank Jesus one day he accepted the gospel. He woke up. He accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. 
In Jesus, we should be always moving forward, never backward. Never go back into the world. Never go back under the law. Somebody said, well, I don't understand that going back under the law. Well, maybe one day we'll talk about it and it becomes more clear. In Jesus, we should always be moving forward, not back. Stephen's death liberated him from this world to glory. His death was not in vain. We look at it and we think, wow, what a sacrifice he made. But the reward he received was out of this world. Sorry for, I'm not going to apologize for being loud because of the Holy Ghost anointing me. So bear with us. Love you. Hope to meet again.